So we're going to carry on writing expressions and substituting for those variables, but this one is slightly different because there will be an equation that we're going to solve. This is really one of the first times that we're going to be seeing that, so let's see what we're going to do with it. So the first part we have been doing right along. There's nothing particularly new here. We're going to write a series of expressions using let statements, and we're going to describe each of these situations. So the first thing says Emily did three times as many math problems in class as Gabe did in the same amount of time. So that means we need to know how many Gabe did first. So we're going to say let m equal number of math problems Gabe did. And then we know Emily did three times as many. So we're going to say let three times, of course, means to multiply 3m equal number of math problems Emily did. And then the next thing, let's see, we have Laura did 14 fewer than Gabe. So we're still going to start with Gabe. The 14 fewer means we're going to subtract 14 from that. So we're going to have m minus 14 equal the number of math problems. And who is this Laura? Laura did. Oh, I forgot they did for Emily. There you go. Okay, so now we know we have an expression for each of them. We know they want to figure out how many they did all together. That means a total. Whenever I do a total, it means I'm adding together. So I'm going to have M, that's how many Gabe did, plus 3M, that's how many Emily did, plus M minus 14, because that's how many Laura did. And that's going to equal the total number of math problems. Okay, so I've got my four expressions. I wrote them all using let statements. So now we hold that Emily did 48 math problems. So the reason this is different is because we know that Emily did 3M problems. So instead of total equals total, which you've probably heard me say before, we're going to set Emily equal to Emily. We know that Emily did 3m, that was the expression that we wrote, and we also know that Emily did 48 math problems. So in order to figure out m, we ask ourselves, what's the opposite? So the opposite of multiplying by 3 is dividing by 3. Divide both sides by 3. These two cancel. I'm left with m <laughs> equals... 3 goes into 4 once, with 1 left over, 3 goes into 18 six times. So that tells me that m equals 16. So now I still have to figure out how many Gabe did and how many Laura did. Because I already know that Emily did... 48 problems. So the expression for Gabe is m, and m equals 16. So Gabe did 68 problems. And for Laura, it's m minus 14. So n, and m still equals 16. 16 minus 14 is two problems. Now I know that you want to just take each of these and add them together to find the total, but that's not what we're going to do. We need to use the expression we wrote for the total. The expression we wrote for the total is m plus 3m plus m minus 14. And we know that m is equal to 16, so we substitute in m plus 3 times 16 plus m minus 14. And now I follow my order of operations. So I know I multiply, oops, 
made a little error there when I rewrote it. That should be an addition sign. So 3 times 16 is 48. I bring down the rest of my problem. <laughs> wow, sorry about that. That M should actually be 16. I apologize for confusing you if I did. So let's just review for a moment. Every time I saw an M, I replaced it with a 16. Then I followed my order of operations. I multiplied first. That gave me 48. And now I'm bringing down the rest of the problem. Hopefully that cleared it up for you. So now I'm doing, um, I'm going from left to right, addition and subtraction. I do have subtraction in here, not only addition, so I have to go in order from left to right. So I start with 16 plus 48. Well, 40 plus 16 will be 56. Plus 8 more gives me 64. Plus 16 minus 14. 64 plus 16. Well, 64 plus 6 is 70. Plus 10 more is 80. Minus 14. 80 minus 10 is 70. Minus 4 more gives me 66 total math problems. And there you go.